This is Algebra 2 with Trig 1C.4A, the first day that we're going to talk about completing the square. Things to remember of what a perfect square trinomial is. We have a pattern, and if our equation follows this pattern, then we can write it as a perfect square, a binomial being squared. So these two are really simple. You probably don't even need to use this pattern for these two equations. But what if our equation was a little bit more complicated like that? I'll give you four seconds to come up with the answer. Ready, go. All right, what's your answer? So when we notice, we look at this one, and we are trying to figure out, is this a perfect square? We often talk about, can you take the square root of it? I don't want to get that confused with taking the square root of it. So it's really, is there a term, when you square it, makes 81x squared? And yes, there is. Is there a term, when you square it, that makes 121? Yes, there is. We can figure out those terms by simply taking the square root of both of those sides. But I don't want that to get confused with us actually taking square roots of the problem. Because we typically could not take the square root of this because it has pluses involved. But 9x is being squared to make 81x squared and 11 is being squared. So that's what this is saying. What number squared and what number squared are making those two values. But also, this middle thing has to be happening at the same time. When you multiply these two values, 9x and 11, that makes 99x, is that half of 198? And actually, the answer is yes. It is half of that. Or times 2, the way the notes are written, or times 2, do you make that? And the answer is yes. Therefore, you can write this as 9x plus 11 quantity squared. That is using the perfect square trinomial pattern. These, you could probably do it without. But can you write this as a perfect square? Yes, it's n squared. That's kind of silly. Can you write 36 as a perfect square? What's that going to be? That's going to be 6 squared. When you multiply these two values together, the 6 and the n, is that half of 12? Yeah, of course it is. 6 is half of 12. So your answer is going to be n minus 6 because the 12 is a negative. We use that as the sign. Squared. You don't have to think about what multiplies to be 36 and adds to be negative 12. You could. That would totally work. But using the pattern of a perfect square trinomial, that's how you could do it. That's how we did it here. Here you had to do it because the other method is so difficult. Here you had different methods. This is just somewhat of a simple one. How could you do this? Most people are going to think 9 times 4 is 36. What multiplies to be 36 and adds to be 12, but 6 and 6? Sure, you can do it like that. So 3x can be squared to make 9x squared. You can think about that as taking the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 4 is 2, or 2 squared makes 4. That's all we're testing. And then when you multiply the 2 and the 3 together, is that half of 12? Yes, it is. So we have 3x, and you use that sign right there, minus the 2 quantity squared. And that's using your perfect square trinomial. So that means this trinomial can be written as a binomial square. That's kind of cool. 
kind of interesting. So let's move on and talk about what can we do with it. What's the point? If you have a perfect square trinomial on one side, on one side of the equal sign, you have a perfect square trinomial. You can rewrite your trinomial in factored form. And then you can use square roots to solve it. So here, what's a way that you would think, ignore anything I've taught you so far, what would you, how would you think about going about solving that? You could, wouldn't be surprised if you would think subtract the 36 over. And if you subtracted the 36 over, you would have zero on one side. That's what we've taught you in the past. If it has a B term, you have to bring everything over to the same side of the equal sign. That is totally true. And in fact, this one happens to be factorable. What multiplies to be 27 and adds to be 6? 9 and 3. Positive 9 and a negative 3. So you can use the zero product property to solve for it. You don't have to write this down. That's why I have it on a separate sheet. But this is a way that prior to today, you would have probably solved that problem in this format. I'm going to show you a different way to solve this problem that you'll also be able to use this method in problems that you can't use factoring. Factoring doesn't work. So yes, you would probably have done it like this. But let's use this whole concept of completing the square. Well, I guess it's still not completing the square, but using this perfect square trinomial. So... How can we rewrite this? How could we factor this trinomial? So we notice that we can take the square root, so we have x. We can take the square root, so we have 3. And this turns into a perfect square trinomial like we learned earlier. This here is a perfect square trinomial. We wrote it as a binomial squared. That's a better term. This is a binomial squared. Equals 36. So we factored this trinomial. Why would you want to factor that? What could you do from here? We can take the square root of both sides. That's what we can do. That's the reason we wanted it to be a binomial squared so we could take the square root of it. So we have x plus 3. And what is the square root of 36? No, it's not 6. It's plus or minus 6. Very important. It has to be plus or minus. Then we'll minus the 3 to both sides. So you have minus 3 plus or minus 6. That is a negative 3 plus 6 and a negative 3 minus 6. Plus or minus 6 to the negative 3. So that gives you 3 and that gives you negative 9. Those were the two answers that we came up with through factoring. We also came up using this method. You're thinking, so why can't I use my factory method? Because maybe we cannot always factor it. Okay? What if it's not a perfect square trinomial? What if it's not easily determined that it's x plus 3 quantity squared? Can we create one? Can we make it be? Can we complete the square? So to find a value, look at this example. We're trying to find the C value. What's going to make this a perfect square? Trinomial. 
what value of C would we need for this to be able to use this method to it? Any suggestions? Anyone have an idea? So to, to determine what the C value is, we want to be able to have half of this value squared. So we're going to take the B value divided by 2 and square it. The negative 26 divided by 2 and square it. That's negative 13 squared. That is... 169. If it was 169, then we would see that an x squared makes x squared. 13 squared makes 169. Multiply these together is half of your 26. So x minus 13 squared is how you could factor that apart. So now we've actually completed, we have created a perfect square trinomial. We've used perfect square trinomials. Now we've created a perfect square trinomial. Now we're going to use that to actually solve a problem. We're going to come down here and do our perfect square trinomial. So, you might be able to add the 19 over. If you add the 19 over, you're going to make it a trinomial equal to zero. It's probably factorable. That is a method that some of them can be solved with. This one cannot be factored. So, we're talking about how to do it without factoring. So, we're going to take our B term divided by 2 and square it. 20 divided by 2 and square it. That's 10 squared which is 100. So I'm going to put 100 on both sides of my equal sign. Now, why did we put 100 on both sides of an equal sign? Besides, that's the way that you work with equations, you got to keep it balanced, so that's why it's on both sides. We use the 100, so we could write this as a perfect square. What multiplies to be 100 and adds to be 20, but 10. That's what we've been talking about all the way through here. And this side makes 81. Now, why would we want to set it up like that? What's the advantage? Now we can square root them both. So this is x plus 10 equals, and what's the square root of 81? It has to be plus or minus 9. So we'll subtract our 10 and subtract our 10, and that gives us negative 10 plus or minus 9, which means negative 10 plus 9, and that means negative 10 minus 9 and you get two different answers. Let's try this next one. Is this one factorable? This one you can't factor. In fact, you could have factored this one, by the way. If you move the 19 over, it was factorable. This one is not factorable. So what we're going to have to do is move the one off to the side Now we have our B term, and we're going to divide it by 2 and square it. That gives us 25. So we're going to add the 25 to both sides of our equal sign. Why did we add the 25 there? So we could write it as a perfect square binomial or we squared the binomial to make the perfect square trinomial. So we can take the square root, 
And when you take the square root of 24, it has to be plus or minus. That's going to be 4 times 6. Add the 5 across. And that's 5 plus or minus 2 root 6. This final one, a little bit different. What do you notice that's different about this problem? I notice the 3 is different. We have a leading coefficient. In fact, you cannot use completing the square. Cannot use completing the square if a is greater than 1. Or if a is not 1. Maybe that's even better because it can't be a fraction either. So if a is not 1, you cannot use it. This is a 3. I cannot complete the square here. Maybe I can adjust it, but I can't do it with the 3 there. Well, the first thing we're going to do is move our 100 over. So I've moved the 100 over. I have this a value that's not equal to 1. I can't have that. So if I factor out my 3, not the x, just the 3. We're not dividing the negative 150 by the 3 or factoring the 3 out of there, just out of the left side of our equal sign. Now we have an x squared with a 1 in front of it. So we can take our b divided by 2 and square it. So now we can complete the square. That gives us a positive 36. So what I'm going to do is add my 36 inside the parentheses. Now, if I put the 36 inside the parentheses, what am I going to add to the other side of the equal sign? Most people are going to say a 36, but that's not going to be right. Because putting a 36 here is actually equivalent to putting 108 three times 36 onto this side of the equal sign. So I have to put 108 on that side of the equal sign. But I can still complete the square here. So that's 3. x minus 6 squared equals negative 42. We could have divided the 3 out originally, and that would have saved us some pain, but it's going to help us tomorrow to know about this 3. So we'll divide the 3 out now. And that gives us negative, 3 goes into 4 once with 1 left over, negative 14. That we can take the square root of. We get plus or minus. Because we have a negative inside here, we get I of a square root. And you can't break down the square root of 14. That's 2 times 7, but there's no perfect square, so there's no more simplifying that. And we add the 6 across. Where do you put the 6? The 6 goes in front of the I. 